Okay. So I will do roll call for the OCEC meeting. Um, Evan Decker. Present. Brenda Lee. We didn't hear you, Brenda, but we saw you mouth. Uh, Scott Parsons. I am here. And Reverend Julius Van Hook. Present. And Brenda Lee. All members are present. I heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll go ahead and share the screen. Just one second. Great. Uh, thank you so much for sharing the screen. Uh, so I'm excited uh, to have my first go round uh, as a chair. So hopefully I, I do you right, uh, Mr. Carpenter, hopefully. I <laughs> Um, so, and uh, thankfully, uh, Crawford pr provided this amazing script. So I'll just go ahead and uh, read through some of that as we get started. Um, so this is the uh, Outreach and Community Engagement Standing Committee meeting of CAB. And uh, if you are a, a member of the public, uh, if you don't mind uh, keeping your participation on mute, uh, we don't have anybody on the phone. Um, and we'll hear comments um, from uh, the board. And then if you have, uh, if you're a member of the public, uh, if you want to uh, comment, you can uh, either raise your hand visually or by using the, the reaction button on the, the Zoom. Uh, and really the um, uh, purpose of our uh, committee is to uh, nurture, our, nurture our CAB ambassador program and also organize our new, uh, our annual new member uh, orientation. Um, and we're grateful uh, for everybody for being here. Um, and why don't we go, we did uh, the roll call, but why don't we go ahead and uh, do the introduction uh, of our members, uh, starting with, with our OCEC members. And uh, I'll go ahead and start, so that'll be myself. Brenda, Reverend Van Hook, and uh, Mr. Parsons. Uh, so I'm Evan Decker. I'm the uh, OCEC chair. I'm not quite sure what that means yet, but I'm figuring it out. <laughs> and um, I'm the uh, Dean of Workforce and Economic Development at Contra Costa College located in San Pablo, uh, California. And uh, we'll go ahead and um, Scott, why don't you go next? Okay, thank you. Evan, uh, my name is Scott Parsons. I'm a resident of Moraga. Um, had a full career uh, here and with the federal government and law enforcement. And um, glad to be a part of the CAB and be here for OCEC this morning. Hello, my name is Reverend Julius Stanhook. I am uh, by a long resident of West County. I am currently the Director of Spiritual Care at Interfaith Juvenile Chaplain, servicing the Contra Costa County Probation Department. So uh, glad to be here. I'm Brenda Lee. I'm a resident of, of Richmond, California. Uh, I'm retired and I am a um, volunteer junkie. Thank you, Brenda. And then uh, any CAB members in attendance? I believe that will be you, uh, Crawford. Uh, Crawford Carpenter, CAB member. Nice to be with you. And then Monique. Hi, I'm Monique Tate with the Office of Reentry and Justice. I am a program coordinator and I am here to support and staff uh, the CAB meetings. Great. Um, thanks so much. I realized um, I did skip a little bit of uh, a page. So um, just to orient uh, ourselves again with some of the responsibilities of OCEC, um, in addition to the uh, nurturing the CAB ambassador program and uh, was doing this, What's going on with this thing, organizing the uh, the annual member orientation. Um, we also identify the outreach methods uh, to engage the community uh, in initiatives related to the public safety realignment, uh, improving public access to information regarding the alignment, and also um, membership cultivation and succession uh, planning for CAP. And I do apologize, uh, 
Ms. Robinson. Thank you for inter introducing yourself. Uh, all right, so I think at this point, if there are any announcements. Um, uh, Evan, would you like the others on the call to introduce themselves? Yes. Uh, or they can introduce themselves in the chat. It's totally up to you. Yeah, since we're a smaller group, why don't we take the time for that? Thank you. Okay, and I can call them if you like. Sure. Okay, so I know um, Elisa Robinson, she introduced herself in the chat already. Um, she is from Supervisor Burgess's office. And then we also have um, our interviewee, uh, Michelle. So Michelle, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Yes. Hi, my name is Michelle Peterson, and I'm probably a little bit like Brenda Lee and that I'm a volunteer junkie. Um, but I really, uh, vol my, my passion and my life work right now is to uh, work on gun violence prevention, mm -hmm. especially at um, the level in which it impacts communities that are greatly infected. So looking at violence interruption and Break, working to break the silence of gun violence, uh, or sorry, the cycle of gun violence in communities that are especially impacted. So at the ground level, supporting up and lifting up those groups. Thanks for being here, Michelle. And uh, we'll have a chance a little bit later on in the agenda to ask you some questions and for you to share uh, more about yourself also. Um, all right, so I think then at this time, if there's any, um, public comment around any of the um, uh, jurisdiction of uh, CAB or OCEC, that's, in, um, uh, that's, any, that's anything that's not on the agenda. Any public comment or uh, announcements? I guess we can put those two together. Okay, seeing none. Um, we'll go ahead to the uh, approval of the minutes. And those are, does Monique bring those, brings those up? I hope you all had a chance uh, to review them. It was our first meeting of the year last uh, month. a second to look through it. If anyone has any comment on the minutes, um, please feel free to go ahead and do so. Otherwise, we can entertain a motion. All right. Well, I, I will certainly move that we uh, accept the minutes as posted. Uh, from our last meeting at OCEC. And this is Scott. This is Brenda, I second it. Thank you, Scott and Brenda. So our minutes are approved uh, from the uh, January 24th meeting with uh, Scott motioning and Brenda uh, second. Um, great, so- um, So Evan, you wanna see if um, people have the public has any comments and if they don't then we can do the vote, official vote okay great thank you for that mm -hmm. uh, so no any, any uh additional public comment on any of the minutes okay seeing none uh, can you um lead us in our vote Monique? yes evan decker aye brenda lee Aye. Scott Parsons. Aye. And Reverend Julius Van Hook. Aye. Motion carries. Great. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so uh, on to the next um, uh, part of our agenda, which uh, thank you, uh, Michelle, for, for being here. Um, I hope everyone had a chance to um, review application um, and um, we will um, have an opportunity to, to ask you some questions and Michelle you did um, introduce yourself but in terms of for perhaps providing a bit uh, more context and interest in um, CAB and OCEC why don't you 
um, take a few more minutes to let us know a little bit more about yourself and, and your application. Of course, so um, just thank you everybody. And obviously we're all here because we care about individuals and uh, that haven't been historically cared about. Um, so my name is Michelle Sinnett Peterson. I live in Alamo, California. I have an 11 year old son and I am a regional leader with Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. And I got into gun violence prevention um, because I was a mother of a young child and the school shootings just uh, were so scary to me. But what I've realized in my journey through this work is the fear that some communities have every day in, in um, being everyday victims and being at risk of gun violence. And so my work has really transitioned more to helping communities, like I said earlier, and working with uh, organizations. I I'm a, basically a volunteer grant writer for um, 100 Years Enterprise in Richmond, motivated to help others in Richmond and a uh, bonafide sister in Annie Hawk. In last year, I, Annie Hawk became a, uh, eligible to receive CalVIP funding, which is the California Violence Intervention Program. And myself and council member Tamisha Walker with Antioch, along with Tasha Johnson, who which works at the city of Antioch, worked to successfully secure 1.8 million in funding for um, CalVIP funds for the city of Antioch, and in turn have allowed them to start a uh, program. They're in the, in the beginning phases of starting their own gun violence intervention programming in the city of Antioch, which is fantastic. Um, Let's see, what else can I tell you about myself? Um, I just feel mostly that, you know, I'm in a place in my life where I'm able to give back and I feel very fortunate for what I've had. And it's just an honor to be able to work with these organizations and lift up the work they're doing and, you know, hopefully continue to help be a secure funding so their work can continue. And then also to help in positions, hopefully in this, if I'm able to join this board, be a voice for those groups, be able to help uh, get information out about those groups and also learn more information about those groups. Cause a lot of people who work in those groups are formerly incarcerated individuals. And that type of background helps build trust within the community because you're talking with people who have a, a shared lived experience. And I just think that I just, and, and so much admiration for the people who do this work because they put their lives at risk every single day so that youth who are at risk of or being victims of perpetrating gun violence um, can see that there's an alternate path to life, their life that these people didn't have. So again, I'm just incredibly um, blessed and fortunate to be in a position in my life where I can give back at that kind of level. Thanks so much, um, Michelle, for um, telling us a little bit more about yourself and, and the work that uh, you've done. It um, sounds like a great effort uh, in Antioch that, uh, that you all went through. Yeah. Really important. And a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it was worth it because we got it, so. <laughs> yes. Yeah, for sure. Um, so at this time, do any uh, folks uh, on o OCEC have any questions uh, for Michelle? Yeah, Scott. I do. Thank you very much, Evan, for asking. And Michelle, um, welcome. And, and I hope you enjoy your interview. You shouldn't, uh, if you're feeling at all nervous about this group, I would suggest you don't. I uh, feel nervous because um, some of the nicest people I've been affiliated with in my career. In any event, if um, the oh, first thing, I saw pictures of horses in the background. Are you a horse person? Uh, no. So full disclosure, um, I'm actually in North Carolina. My uh, my parents are elderly and I'm I, I come back to try to help them as much as I can. So. Oh, uh, great. Yeah, so my dad's a horse person. <laughs> Your dad's the horse person. I am a mountain yeah. biker. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm not a big equestrian fan because I love to mountain bike and we don't get along. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, two different. Uh, well, hey, uh, I had to ask. Um, yeah. So, um, what 
looking at your abilities, skills, and attributes, what are the top three, and it can be any one of those, either an ability, a skill, or an attribute um, that you'd like to share with us that we can depend on if you were selected to be a part of this board? Um, I think, you know, I'm incredibly compassionate and empathetic and um, uh, I, I, <laughs> I pretty much have a can-do ethic and I don't, I don't really, qu I don't quit. So, um, you know, and one of the things I failed to share in this, what I was introducing myself is I actually um, serendipitously ended up with this work because I was a paramedic firefighter and I got my paramedic training in Oakland and then served in, as a firefighter for eight years in the city of San Jose before we had our son. And uh, I couldn't save those kids, you know, from so many gunshot victims. I couldn't save those kids those children and, um, and those individuals and, and realizing that there's work there that actually does save lives really is what drives, I think, in a weird way and that I didn't even recognize as I got involved in the work um, has, is what drives me forward in doing this work because it, it's proven, it's data proven. And so I guess what I'm, I guess it relates back to the attributes of myself in that I don't, I'm incredibly determined and I don't quit, so. Um, I think that those are pretty good attributes to have when you're dealing with. Absolutely. So compassion, empathy, and you're not a quitter. No. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> so um, I'll pass the, um, at this point, the, the, the mic over to someone else for questions, and I, I may return, though. Okay. All right. Thank you. You got it. Hey, man. You know, this is Reverend Julius Van Hook, and um, I just want to uh, ask a follow-up question. Uh, you used the, the term uh, saving. Uh, I'd like to know what, um, based on that example, if given with, 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 the, with unlimited resources, with whatever you have, what, what would saving look like and how, and how many, and, and saving on, um, Sorry, I'm trying to get my shit out of my question ready. The saving, but saving on multiple levels, you know, um, as it relates to what you're attempting to do now, getting involved with, you know, community, you know, governmental things, but uh, also on the ground too. So I'm just wondering what your idea of saving looks like. Yeah, so I, I brought that up because again, I couldn't, um, you know, gun gunshot, I was trained to deal with gunshot wounds as a medical problem. Um, but what I didn't realize is the the impact that 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 victims either end of life or completely altered life as a result of uh, gun violence has on a community and and the members of a community and a family. And I think that that's what when I say saving now, I certainly am not in a position to save lives and break the cycle of gun violence at the root cause, because I'm not gonna be somebody that can go into the areas that are most impacted and be a voice that could be rec um, believed in or trusted or recognized. So what I try to do is support those that do that work in providing the much needed funding and recognition that the work does, educating the public, educating our school districts, educating our uh, municipalities, our governments, and our, our city and local governments to understand that this work is beneficial, that this work actually is data driven, that it's proven to, to, to break the cycle. And ultimately, that's the cycle. That is what the only thing I think that can truly save lives is getting in at the root, the root places where this violence happens, interrupt the cycle and allow these individuals who have through past ex pa their past lived history and their past lived experience can come to a place where they can show love and empathy and be a voice for the at-risk youth and young adults who, um, to try to break that cycle, you know? And uh, so I, that's, I think that when I say saving now, that's what I look at. And again, it's not me, I can't do that work, but I can certainly help those individuals that do that work who, you know, the programs that I support right now as a volunteer in grant writing are completely self-funded. So 
whatever opportunities I can find to help them be able to continue their work and make their work easier so they can focus on the job of saving the lives of people in communities is what I try to do. Wonderful, thank you so much. And uh, you're whether, you're, whether you are um, you know, gonna be a part of us or not, I'd definitely like to work with you um, on some things. Thank you for that answer. Thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for that question, uh, Reverend Van Hook. Uh, Brenda, did you have any questions or anything you wanted to ask? Let me unmute myself. No, I'm good. Okay, great. Um, well, I, I have a question and I'm gonna uh, model this a little bit uh, after uh, Crawford uh, at when he when I went through this similar process not too long ago um, and ask, what are some of your favorite uh, places in the Bay Area to go mountain biking? Oh, well, that's an easy question. <laughs> Um, I love, I, I'm fortunate to live very close to uh, Mount Diablo State Park, so I've, I'm in there a lot, and um, Shell Ridge, Brioni's, um, oh, and then in Pleasanton Ridge and, and Pleasanton, those are probably my top four, but mostly hiking and biking in Mount Diablo because it's, it's just, uh, I think for me, it's this form of meditation to get out there and be in nature and just be able to, um, have an hour and a half of solitude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm and I'm very fortunate and lucky and privileged to be able to do that. That's fantastic. Um, great. Well, I, I see on our um, uh, agenda, this is an item for vote. And I think just to give you, Michelle, a, a, a perhaps an overview of the process, if I think I have it right. Um, in our role as OCEC, we um, conduct these initial kind of informal um, interviews, and then uh, we are then um, making the, uh, the nomination or request to um, the general cab board, who will then um, uh, you'll go through a, a similar uh, process with them before um, and if you're uh, accepted to the board. Um, am I getting that process right, Monique? Yes, okay, great, Good. Uh, I understood it. Um, great, so um, at this time then, if there's no further questions or public comment, I know Scott, you thought maybe we'd come back to you. Yeah, I did, uh, thank you. I was curious, um, Michelle, if you could share a little bit about this bona fide sisterhood in Antioch. I'm not sure I know what that is. Yeah, so bona fide sisterhood is started by a woman who is a, Oh boy, I think she's been a violence interrupter in Oakland for 18 years. She works for Youth Alive, uh, which is another violence intervention programming uh, group in Oakland. And she has gone to take that work in Antioch. She's a resident of Antioch. She still does the the violence interruption work and uh, it, with Youth Alive in Oakland, but then she self-funds this program that she has in, in Antioch called Bonafide Sisterhood. And, you know, she's just one of these incredible people who um, every day has to deal, you know, she's a crisis intervention responder. She, she arrives at the scene of a homicide or any type of uh, gun, active gun violence, and then works with the families to provide um, services to the victims, um, and then also to the families, and then helps to, to if the person, if someone is in threat, uh, threatened with their lives um, because of a situation, she works to emer on emergency relocation. Um, so all of those services that she does in Oakland, she's trying to do in Antioch. But again, everything she's doing is, is self-funded. So that's where I come in and I've tried to help her secure funding. We were uh, unsuccessful with Cal Vip and her being a partner in the city of Antioch. So we're trying to find other resources for her. And the, you know, what's incredible in the state of California is this is recognized. This work is recognized as m largely because of the work that um, the Office of Neighborhood Safety in Richmond did, Brenda, where you live. Uh, they have been in, uh, in I think they were conceived in 2007 and they're still doing work. But when they came in to Richmond, 
there was a 90% homicide rate and they have driven that homicide rate down to 12%. This work is proven. And so that model is then trying to be replicated in other areas, which is what Youth Alive has done and these other organizations, but um, Bonafide Sisterhood is trying to bring that into Antioch. And uh, it's a hard road when, you, when you're trying to go at it alone. So she's great. Her name is Nina Carter, and I would highly recommend Googling her because she's incredible. Oh, well, that, I appreciate um, the information that you just shared. And as you know, my career dealt with a lot of uh, gun violence as well. And I'm always happy to see programs that can minimize um, the incidence of violence with firearms. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I, I used to be a peacekeeper with the Office of Neighborhood Safety. This is Reverend Van Hood. I used to work with the Office of Neighborhood Safety. I used to work with, I used to work with the Office of Neighborhood Safety. Oh, you did? In various capacities, so I'm very aware of that work. Yep. And I've worked with all the, several of the young men who have participated in that program. Really yes. most. Yes. I, I have a special place in my heart for Sam Vaughn, <laughs> who's the director, as you know. Oh, yes, yeah, Sam. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Michelle, just one last question. Do you, um, do you miss your career in firefighting and uh, paramedic and <laughs> that nature? Um, as you probably can relate, <laughs> having been in law enforcement, uh, yes, I do, but I'm also, I, I'm really glad that I didn't have to go through it with COVID and um, just the, it's just gotten to be such a harder job. And um, yeah. so there's a lot, yes, I miss my crew. I really miss my captain. I miss being a paramedic, but I don't miss getting up at 12, two, four, six o'clock in the morning <laughs> all night <laughs> yeah. long. Um, and I, I feel really, you know, I'm just so fortunate that I, we only have one child and, I'm, and I've been able to give as much time and attention as I have to him. And I wouldn't trade that for anything, but I do miss my job, yes. <laughs> Great, well, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you miss it, but also I can appreciate everything you just said as well. I bet you can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Organizational chaos, you know? <laughs> we did, we, I did thrive in that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I get the chaos of an eleven-year-old, <laughs> which in itself is its own uh, organizational chaos. Yes, but, it is. <laughs> you know. um, great. So um, I think before we do um, a vote, Michelle, is there anything? No pressure. Is there anything else you want to say? You know, after kind of going through that process, uh, anything else you want to share um, with us, um, if at all? I just, you know, I just want to thank everybody. I mean, obviously people are on this board because they care about people who have been neglected and not cared about in our society. And I think, and I hope that you allow me to be a part of this board because I, I do believe that it, like in looking at our backgrounds, I could offer um, a different lens. And um, in, in the, in the work that I've been doing with these, with the, with helping to break the cycle of gun violence and, um, and I, you know, I don't, I didn't share this, but I did run for political office last fall um, and I didn't make it, but I've made some really good connections within that. And then um, I became a delegate for the Democratic Party uh, just in January, which I think can provide also help with the unique lens as I'll be a part of the um, constituents that help shape the vision. And I, I know I'm not, we're not partisan in this group and I understand that, but I'm just saying it because I help. I will help be one of the people that writes the, the platform for the Caldem party. And I just think that this kind of work that we're doing on this board collectively that you're doing and the work that I've been doing within my own contacts is just so important. And it needs to be, it needs to be presented and it needs to be heard. And the more that we can educate people, the more that I think we can provide for opportunities for people as they're coming out of incarceration, which is so important because that's, that's the key thing. If we want to keep people from going back or even entering incarceration, we need to be able to provide opportunities for them at whatever level. And we need to change things too. We need to get be able to expunge records um, and make it easier for people to be able to get jobs, you know? So anyway, that's uh, that's it. I just thank all of you. And no matter what happens, I'm, I'm grateful for all of us because we're doing really important work. 
Great, thank you um, so much. Uh, Monique, as a, as a point of um, order, I think that's the right, um, do we do a vote and then hear from the public or do we open it up for public questions? Um, you can um, entertain a motion, a second, and then ask for public comments at that point. Okay, okay. Um, maybe, um, I don't know how this fits, excuse me one second, Evan. I have some questions. Would that be after they vote? Um, you know, either I think it can be done either way. So if you have questions, you certainly can um, ask the public if they have questions first. So yes, you could do it that way as well. Okay, okay. I, um, why don't we go ahead and do it that way then? So okay. if any members of the public have any uh, additional questions or, or comments. Okay, if, if I may, and maybe I'll yield first if Elisa has any questions. And then after that, I have one, a few questions here for you, Michelle. Great. I do not have any questions, but it's been okay. great hearing about uh, your experiences, <laughs> Michelle. Thank you very much, Lisa. Oh, uh, yes. Well, uh, Michelle, good morning and uh, interesting experiences and backgrounds. And we're almost neighbors. I live in Danville. You're right next to us in Alamo. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. uh, and I'm a bike rider. I, uh, I like to ride on the Iron Horse Trail. And you talked about solitude and getting out. Um, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Michelle, some questions for you. And um, reading your application, uh, your background is quite impressive. I have maybe two or three, maybe four questions for you. The first question being, how would you prioritize housing, employment, and mental health for those who are returning citizens? And for example, would housing be your first priority? Would mental health or would be or employment? You know, just just wondering how you would prioritize those. You know, I would have to prioritize mental health first because I think that if people aren't okay here, you can provide housing and you can provide employment, but they're not going to be able to hold that. Um, and then obviously housing because they need secure a secure foundation to be able to transition to employment. So I think all of those things are incredibly important, but if I had to prioritize one of them, honestly, it would be mental health. Well, thank you for that. And just for your information, we had a past member of CAB who was on this particular committee. And oh. he was uh, a returning citizen. And I'll always remember what he said. If your head's not right, nothing else matters. So no. passed your first test. <laughs> 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 that wasn't a test. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, next item. Where do you think, you know, you talked about funding. You talked about funding in Antioch, funding in Richmond, et cetera. Where do you think funds would be best dispersed to assist an individual who is returning to society? Well, I think it goes back to what you were talking about. I and mean, we have to put funding to those three things, right? We need to help fund um, services that will allow uh, people returning to society to get the mental health they need. We need to have funding to help people work into transitional housing. And then we need to have funding to help people get jobs so that they can stay secure in their abilities to be able to provide for themselves. Um, so I think that those are, and I think obviously also any type of um, rehabilitative means to address any type of maybe drug treatment programs. Um, and then the work that I do specifically to help people, you know, it can be a, a bit of a, um, can kind of cross a couple things off the bucket list there if you are training people who have been incarcerated for gun violence and they realize within their incarceration that they don't want to see people make the same mistakes they made when they come out to provide the training to be able to provide them and sorry employment opportunities 
to be gun violence interrupters, I think would be another way to help with employment options for people in that category who uh, who are facing or coming out of incarceration. So. Thank you. You, uh, I'll just segue into a term that you used. In your application, you used a term and the term was violence interrupters. Mm -hmm. Would you maybe comment on what that means to you, a violence interrupters? Mm -hmm. There's different uh, ways to go about being a violence interrupter. There's um, hospital-based violence interrupters where they come in and they, when someone's been shot, they go to the hospital bedside of that person to encourage and counsel and mentor um, provide services for that person so that when they come out and are in a place where they're back in their community, that they aren't trying to be retaliatory. And that then also works with the people who work at a community level as well, who come into neighborhoods where, like for the example, and, and um, Julius can attest to this, Office of Neighborhood Safety goes into areas and neighborhoods where there is an increased risk of gun violence, and they know specific individuals who are the most at risk of being gun perpetrators of gun violence. And they know this because they do threat assessments every year. It's part of the work that on, uh, Office of Neighborhood Safety does that they identify the areas that are most at risk and, that though, and then within those areas identified specific individuals. And they work with those specific individuals to break the cycle by getting these violence interrupters to them counseling them on different ways to be able to manage, manage their anger, provide uh, community support groups to give them this. A lot of individuals didn't have a father figure, didn't have a mother figure, came from fi dire financial backgrounds, um, resorted to life in the criminal system, gang violence because or gang life because it's the only way they need to provide. And so they come in and they provide therapy almost <laughs> Uh, uh, support and then work to tell, you know, educate that person with through these various means that there are other ways that you don't have to be this way. And they, they take on cases and they work with these individuals for as ever, however long it takes. But I think the most important thing is once you get through a certain period is you have to be able to supply an alternative. So if say, for example, they're working with getting somebody established over in Martinez in the refineries working as an apprentice, we have to have a way to expunge their, I'm, I'm digressing a little bit, but we have to wait, have a way to expunge their criminal background so that they can then become a full union member of a facility in Martinez or a union um, backed job in Martinez to be able to provide these individuals with other outcomes. But going back to what I was saying, it's that's the long-term goal. The primary and most immediate goal is to break that cycle because most gun violence is retaliatory in these neighborhoods. You've done me wrong, I'm gonna do you wrong. And then you're gonna do wrong again and it just keeps going and going and going. And these individuals are heroes in my book because they put their lives on the line every day going into these neighborhoods to break that cycle. Wow, well, thank you, thank yeah. you. Um, I had one other, and this is kind of a, an administrative uh, question for you. CAB meets on the second Thursday of each month. Mm -hmm. And that's from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Mm -hmm. And going forward, our meetings are gonna be in person. Would that be a problem attending those meetings? No. Okay. The next item. <laughs> Again, I'm a, a delving. You want a carpool? Yeah. <laughs> I, well, there you go. We can save gas. How's that? No, better yet. We'll ride our bikes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That would be okay. great. <laughs> okay. Um, we have three standing committees that you uh, have to be a member of. Okay. Those are standing committees are this committee here, which is OCEC. And this committee meets 11 o'clock to 1230 on the third uh, Tuesday of each month. 
Yeah, so I, let me throw that date out to you. Mm -hmm. And then we have a most important uh, committee of programs and services. They meet on the third Thursday of each month from 11 to 1230. And then finally, policy and budget, they meet on the third Friday of each month from 11 to 1230. So hopefully one of those time frames would fit your schedule. And I'll get the uh, nudge in right now, preferably policy and budget, but you're welcome <laughs> to join yeah. other committees, you know, hint, hint. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> but that's okay too, that's okay too. But I wanted to share that and also thank you for uh, joining us and sharing your story. So thank you. You're welcome. And I, uh, I can tell you that the the third and the third Tuesday and the third Thursday are fine. I will be honest and full disclosure. I sit on the CalVIP Coalition, the California Violence Intervention Programming Coalition, and we meet on the third Friday of every month. At that, I'm not sure. It might actually. I think it's a little bit later, so I could make part of the meeting and then have to flip over, but. Again, I think that if selected, the work that I or what I learned through that CalVIP coalition meeting transfers over to the work that you all do in this advisory board. So like I learned about a lot of funding opportunities in that. I learned, learned about like apprenticeship and trade programs in that meeting. So I think okay. there are things that can work hand in hand together. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. And I should go back to that when you talked about like, you know, that's a, that does touch on employment, right? We need to get we need to get more apprenticeship and trade programs available as as transitional pathways for people who are coming out of incarceration, so that they can get employment. Exactly, exactly. Well, again, thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Mr. Parker. It's nice to speak with you. <laughs> yeah. Sorry to take so long, Evan. No, I appreciate it, Crawford. Uh, very uh, insightful and appropriate uh, questions. I, I really do appreciate it. Um, and when you're talking uh, workforce development, you're talking my language. So that's that's fantastic. <laughs> um, okay, great. Well, I appreciate that. Any other comments uh, at this time? Okay, we're well, seeing none. Um, if we have a, uh, I think we are making a motion uh, to recommend um, the consideration uh, of Michelle to CAB. So, what? You're looking for a motion? Did you say, Evan? Uh, you cut out for a second there. Uh, I apologize. Yeah. Uh, we at this point, uh, we can uh, entertain a motion if someone would like to uh, put one forward. Sure. <clears throat> I, I'll move that um, the OCEC um, cast a vote to move Michelle Peterson forward to the interview process before the full cab at the um, next cab meeting. Great, do we have a second? I do it. I'll second. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Brenda. So that uh, is Scott uh, first and then uh, Brenda. Any uh, other comments from the public at this time? Or further discussion? No? Okay, great. So uh, roll call. Okay. Um, Evan? Aye. Brenda? Aye. Scott? Aye. And Reverend Van Hook. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Great, uh, thank you so much. And uh, thank you, Michelle. Um, you're welcome uh, to stay on for the remainder of the meeting if you like. Um, uh, we're gonna go over the rest of the agenda here, uh, but you don't have to. Um, so appreciate your time. Thank you so much for uh, your candor and sharing with us. Um, it was really great to learn more about those, uh, those programs. Uh, and um, really hear uh, your understanding and, um, and passion uh, for working to, to quell the gun violence in the community. So we really appreciate that. Um, the next meeting, the CAB meeting is March 9th. Um, 
from what time to what time I forget, but it's listed here uh, from 10 to 12. So Thursday, March 9th. And um, Monique will uh, follow up with you. Yeah. Thank you all. Great. Awesome. Okay. So on to uh, item number five, um, which is uh, continuing to uh, look at our work plan. Um, and on our agenda, that's the last two pages. Um, and we did, we made it um, to, I think, task number three um, on uh, in the community outreach area. Um, but there were, I think there was also some follow up around task number two. Um, and then before I get into that, um, and I am uh, guilty of this also, Monique had sent out the work plan um, asking for any feedback or, and contributions. Um, and I didn't respond and no one else did either. So, oh. so we'll have to continue to update um, that. Or am I misstating so, that, uh, Monique? No, uh, well, Brenda responded. She oh, didn't apologies. have anything uh, to add. However, my apologies that I did not update the information that you did cover from last month's meeting. So I will, you know, um, I think it's easier to do it as a working document. However, I can go back to the recording and update. So what I did, because I didn't update tasks one, two, and three, or whatever was covered, um, I didn't do it succinctly the way you discussed it. So we can uh, either do it now, I can do it on the Word document, or I can go back and cover that from the recording, and then we can start at task three or four, and I can actually type while you're discussing exactly how you would like it to read. Okay. Um, so why don't, um, my, my thought would be um, just in, um, on the honor of the time, since we didn't make it through the whole plan last time, is to um, focus in the areas where we didn't. So um, task two in the community outreach and then task three. And then um, for the next, if we have time this meeting, we can go back. But for the next meeting, if we get those updates in there based on what was recorded, um, and then we can review it last time there. How does that? Sound everybody. Did that make sense to everybody else? Um, so really, the re the recommendation here would be this: um, last time we made it to the community outreach part, task two, um, we didn't make it to um, uh, task three of the community outreach. Um, so um, this is Scott. If I could just comment. Um, Monique, when you review the notes and the recording, um, and I have misplaced my notes, and I talked to Crawford yesterday, and um, he had kind of suffered from the same situation. We, I remember there was discussion around task, um, implementing a task number six under membership and cultivation, and I even offered to get a hold of Evan and, and we re rewrite it, but I need some clarity around the conversation on that. So if you don't mind, when you do review this at your when it works for you, if you don't mind getting a hold of me and letting me know the context of a task six, because that is missing out of our notes. And I'd sure appreciate that. And I only bring that up, Evan, now because if we're going to move on to community outreach, um, that was something that was mentioned. And uh, do you have a recollection, Evan, about that? Yeah, yeah. The task six um, um, dealt around the um, the addition of the annual orientation, um, and and I think the the PowerPoint presentation. Um, and that was kind of intentionally adding it there um, as a part of the member cultivation so that it's something that we we look at um, annually 
that's that's my recollection of it. Um, and um, I, okay, yeah. Well, so that said, I will submit um, a draft. I said that last time, and I apologize that I didn't. But I lost my notes, and I didn't want to send something in that didn't make sense. So to the point of what you just kind of said, I can submit um, in preparation for our next meeting, um, a draft task six. How's that sound? Sounds good to me. And, and perhaps we can, um, you and I can touch base uh, before that. Yeah, it, that would be helpful. And also if there's something additional to that, um, Monique, when you look at the, the conversation, please get in touch with me and let me know so I can make that a part of my draft task six. Is that okay? Thank you. Back to you, Evan. Thanks. Um, thanks, uh, Scott. Um, so, yeah, so I think we, we did make it to um, task three. Um, I, I'm hesitating because as I'm reading um, task two, um, I think uh, Monique had that task two in community outreach, outreach was um, the uh, updating of the mailing list and sharing of the mailing list. I think that is correct. And, um, and I know I, I had that. Um, and then uh, task three um, was um, addressed at the, the CAB meeting on February 9th, and we had a number of volunteers um, for a few of those monthly meetings. Um, but I don't, I didn't, I didn't write them all down. Um, and I know Monique, may, perhaps um, we haven't had a chance to update that um, yet either. That is correct. So, um I can definitely uh, state the meetings that we have, which I can provide it to you. And I stated it in another subcommittee meeting that if you'd like for, um, if you'd like for your committee members mm -hmm. to uh, sit on different meetings, say monthly, depending on how often they convene, to make it not burdensome, you might want to, um, the, the reason for this is for to report out on CAP affairs, right? Something that's pertinent to CAP. So that person would report out at the full CAP meeting. And then, um, you know, they certainly can look at a recording if it's a recorded meeting. So I don't want the members to feel like they have to attend every meeting. So they mm -hmm. may re review the recording, uh, say for instance, if they were to go to the um, Board of Supervisors, they can review the recording um, prior to the time to submit it to uh, the agenda to be pu published. And then they would include that in the, re well, they would have their own report out. And so um, I feel like I'm scrambling, but anyway, they uh, can certainly, um, attend virtually or review it virtually. And if you're an assigned member, and this is simply what I told the other committee, if you're an assigned member and you want to go in person uh, or view it at when the meeting is happening, you could, um, if you're not able to attend, then you can um, maybe reach out to another member to see if they can be an alternate for you. So mm -hmm. there are a number of ways of how this can be handled. Thanks for that. Uh, oh, Crawford, did you want to? Uh... Yeah, I just wanted to add maybe one or two things. Uh, Reverend Van Hook was kind enough to um, focus on faith-based organizations. Might we put that? I don't know whether that's in task two or three or wherever. Do we want to highlight that? I I think that's a 
tremendous um, a vehicle for us if we could reach out to them for potential membership. Uh, do we want to highlight that or how do we want to get that in our work plan? Because we do have to get some system to identify as we have our county, uh, state, and city officials and offices, it seems to me we should, is, is that in the community outreach section then? Uh, I, I'm not sure where it goes, Evan, but if you would consider that, and I had some other points to maybe consider for this that I had talked to Monique about, but we couldn't get on the agenda. So, uh, but we could when we got to this portion. I'll be quiet and just kind of let me know when I can chime in, if you would, please. Okay. Um, I, we did, I think, initially, um, Reverend Van Hook brought up the, the um, faith-based organizations in this uh, discussion previously. And reading the task, um, county and city boards and commissions, CBOs and community meetings that directly affect the reentry population. And then in the seeking community input, concern and recommendations, that would seem to me to tie in with um, the, the faith-based organizations. Um, and, and, that per, and that's kind of how I'm thinking about it. I'm wondering, uh, Reverend Van Hook, if, that, if that's where you see um, that um, potentially that uh, faith-based organization going within that task, or is there also another um, task orientation around it? Uh, I think that will work. As I'm looking, I think that I think that's um, that's a good way to use that committee or to use that initiative rather. Can you please repeat where that should be? So I think um, in task two, um, in the community outreach. Um, Scroll down. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I'm, I'm looking at you all. Um, yeah, so task under community outreach. Um, uh, there we go, task two. Um, Perhaps it might say um, something, um, county and city boards, commissions, CBOs, um, faith-based and community meetings. Excellent, excellent. Just wanted to make sure we got that in there somewhere. I appreciate that, uh, Crawford, thank you. Well, no, thank you so much, you. thank you. Um, and then in terms of, um, that list, I don't know, Monique, if that's a, a, a list that, that, um, that your office keeps track of. Um, so that might be something we need to find or, yeah. Yes, and so on the agenda, I do have that I was gonna give an update, but yes, it is a list that uh, Crawford worked really hard with uh, Nicole, our previous um, administrative person. And so I was working on that list and I was trying to get it um, updated to provide it, but we have like three different lists. So I was able to update the board of supervisors and in that list it entails the point of contact. So I was able to update that one, making phone calls to uh, the individuals uh, who handled the scheduling for the board of supervisors. So that particular list is updated. Then we have a mayor's list for all of the surrounding cities. And so that one is a little challenging because we have uh, different mayors and the information is not readily available on every website. You would think it would be, but it isn't. So um, I probably got halfway through the list, um, but I do want to make sure it's accurate. So um, I did not finish that one. And then we have another list which are the state officials. And so that one I have not updated yet. Um, and I, like I say, it's certainly not, I didn't want to provide an old list because there's so many, uh, turn, so much turnover. Well, I shouldn't say turnover, but there are, you know, changes, right? New elected mm -hmm. officials, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I wanted to, I would like to provide you with the accurate information. That's 
the point. Okay. So I am still in the process of doing that. Okay. Hey, Monique, um, just a quick comment. I know it's hard to find all the updated people like on mm -hmm. all the different cities' websites, but mm -hmm. there is the Contra Costa Mayor's Conference. Okay. Uh, and they provide pretty much the most up-to-date, best information on who, at least in Contra Costa County, um, okay. is sitting in office and in city councils, that sort of thing. No, that's a great suggestion. Thank you. Because looking at their websites, it's very difficult to find the newly elected mayors. It really is. And, and it and takes so, a minute to get it all like um, updated up. But I believe right. that the 2023 list is out. Okay. And if you can't find it on their website, let me know. I can and help you figure it out. Okay. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. Welcome. Okay. I hate to say this, but old fashioned, that list was put together with phone calls because the websites don't work. And if it would help, uh, um, there's already a script that's been developed. If you want to make a phone call to a mayor's office, a state representative's office, et cetera, we've already got a script for that. So if that okay. would help you in okay. the process, well, you wouldn't need it, I don't think, Monique, but if there's any member here on the standing committee, we could give you that script and it would probably be helpful if maybe you could call three or four of the cities. And if you could divvy it up that way of the ones where you have a question, I'd be more than glad to give you that script and it makes it easy on you. I think that's a great idea because I did make some phone calls as well. And I did get a few phone calls back, but it's also hard because most of the phone calls go to voicemail. But like I said, a few people did return my call, but if we could divvy it up and uh, we can definitely have that list um, compiled uh, soon, that would be helpful. Thank you. Okay, so it sounds like there's a next step in there. Um, and uh, so one, I think next step is a, around whichever list um, maybe needs support and being updated um, to just let us um, know which ones and maybe we can um, all you know, make a few phone calls to help with that. Okay, so I think what would be a good idea, Evan, is um, I'll go, like Elisa suggested, I'll go to the Mayor's Conference uh, 2023 list, which should have the updated mayors. And so I've already started the mayor's list. I think I can go ahead and finish that. And then maybe you all can help with the third list, which is the state officials, because that has not been updated yet. Okay. Okay. And I can, I guess, send out, uh, Crawford, I guess I could send out what I have that you compiled. And then, um, uh, I don't know, maybe we could talk about it in the agenda planning meeting, how you want to, to handle that logistically. Okay. Well, it, again, be careful of just the mayor's office, because that's the purpose of the phone call. If you call the mayor's office or if you put the mayor's office down and you think that's your contact, you've got to call, talk to the chief of staff or whatever, and they will direct you to a separate person who could be communications and outreach. Right. That's the individual that has the meat on the bone for us. Yeah. The other people, it'll, it'll just go to a file and the information won't be distributed. Okay. If that helps. Yes, thank you. And so that's the kind of the city, county, state boards, commissions. What about the CBOs, faith-based and community meetings? So for the faith-based community, um, um, I think it's eight. H3, I'm not sure, I could be wrong with which uh, community organization. Uh, it's Jamie Jeanette, and she has been in several of our meetings, and it just escapes me which agency she's with, but she sent me a list that had a number of faith-based organizations on it, her particular list, 
and I was impressed and I could maybe share with you all the ones she provided. And then if there are additional ones that Reverend Van Hook may be aware of that should be on that list, then we can definitely add that. Now the CBOs, we certainly should have those because we, um, we, um, you know, we contract with them and we work with them. So we definitely have that. And that is, um, you know, we don't, okay. So the three lists that we have are, um, board of supervisors, then we have the mayors, and then we have state officials. Now it sounds like we want another list and all of this is to ensure that they're on our newsletter. Is that correct? Does that sound right? Am I am I correct, Crawford? Maybe. Yeah, the other list was for faith based. Yeah, you right. already got you've already got a list. You know, maybe we're complicating this. We've already got that other list or three or four lists, so that needs to be updated, and they'll be continually communicated with when you send out your communications, Monique. Right. The new list is the one for faith based. Right. And possibly to cut through the chase a little bit so we don't go from meeting to meeting. Might you reach out with the list you have from the lady that sent you? Mm -hmm. you if you could get in touch with uh, Reverend Van Hook and then let's go with that. I yeah. don't think you need to waste a whole meeting again. You know, right. uh, well, the paralysis of analysis here. Hey, right. Get that doggone list from that lady. Let dog. Oh, you'll love this. Let Reverend Van Hook bless it, and let's move forward. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking too. Is that <laughs> he, he can bless it or vet it or yeah, it or and, <laughs> and he can add to it if we need to add to that particular list. And really, it's a matter of taking that information and updating our list serve so that okay. when we send communication out uh all of the individuals will be notified great great okay okay fantastic so that that's great i'm glad to have that added into that task um okay so any other comment on that task or can, should we move forward to the next task number three Okay. Uh, all right. So um, task number three. So this was the, uh, the, the one that was um, discussed at the last um, CAB meeting. So um, we will have a, an updated list of the, um, the uh, community and board commission meetings that are happening. And we had a number of people volunteer. I think we I think we covered most of the meetings with with a, a primary and an alternate um, person, um, and I, get, I imagine that will be in the notes for the next cab meeting. Yeah. Any other comments on this task? Okay. Um, and so I guess after we um, see those minutes um, at our next meeting, we can review and see if there's any any gaps that um, uh, where we want to reach out to anybody to make sure that we're attending or perhaps um, one of us can, can fill in a gap if needed. Um, okay. Um, and then for task number four, um, we need cab ambassadors to sign cabinets to be ambassadors to the boss and uh, CCP. Okay, so I'm a little less familiar with this task. So Crawford, uh, can you help uh, elaborate a little bit on um, what this is and what we've done in the past? Uh, yes. Um, what This will probably um, come to fruition maybe June and July. Uh, I, I would think, that, you know, Scott, that's when I believe maybe you want to chime in too, Scott, where we start getting everything, you know, we start, uh, what is it, uh, playing the 
playing the trumpet June, July, so that everybody understands we're getting ready. We right. have our toolkit. Uh, go ahead, Scott. Just well, in. yeah, and I think each year it's it's kind of moved around a little bit, but it's generally um, at the beginning of summer. You know, either end of May or or June, we start to discuss um, those assignments, and um, that sounds easier than it actually is because the last time we tried to do it it was uh as soon as we got it written then then somebody left the board and then we had to replace that person and and there was all kinds of uh, changes that occurred but what we don't want to do and it's kind of happened this last year i think as well is that um the assignments occurred and they occurred late enough and you correct me if I'm wrong, Crawford, but that it, time was kind of pressed in that um, November period where, you know, before you know it, the holidays were coming. And some of the board members did not actually end up um, having uh, those interviews in a timely fashion. And, and it got, I think, a little uncomfortable. So if we start in June, and as a group start developing our, our talking points um, and, and preparing for our presentations, at the same time, be starting to assign people uh, to them, you know, June, July, and then in August, we know exactly who's going to talk to who when, right? And we, we start scheduling those things. And um, I think this is the most uh, valuable a task in many respects uh, because it ends up being the most fruitful for this group to for the exchange of information with critical players and um, at least that's my reflection on it and uh, I think you would agree Crawford that, that there were very good interviews that did occur and we learned a lot from them. You and nailed it Scott and uh, you know, just maybe one other quick item. We should try to stay away from November because you're into holidays and then December, November, December, at least my experience is those are dead months for us. So we might want to say, we might want to be talking of uh, June, July, and if we could get a meeting in August, September, no later than October. It seems to me that should be our timeline because this other timeline for some reason doesn't work. We, uh, we, we uh, I think as Scott said, we're running into obstacles in November, December. So um, we should just consider that um, moving up our timeline. Yeah. And the tools are there to do it. It's, it's not complicated. It shouldn't be this year. You know, we, we've got our people. We know the organizations, the individuals. So it's a matter of let's get going. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And the only thing I'd recommend, um, Evan, is that um, you kind of stay in, uh, in contact with uh, Monique and and the agendas for like CCP and, and Board of Soups, if they know that's what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be reaching out and making those appointments. It may encourage people to respond quickly to us. We had a few people that, uh, you know, they were hard to uh, get to, to respond, which kind of added to the, the anxiety a little bit that, and it wasn't necessary. So if we can just keep that line of communication going that, hey, the, the board is going to be scheduling these, and we encourage CCP and B, uh, the, the Board of Supervisors members to get back to us right away. Board was excellent. They were very good. Uh, there were some others that, that kind of, uh, we had to work extra hard to get them to schedule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, so this, um, so this is um, task force here related to the, the meeting tomorrow with, uh, Supervisor Carlson, is that that would fall in this category? Well, actually, it, it doesn't. Um, it, it, it isn't an official ambassador meeting, but you're exactly right, Evan. It's going to be um, Crawford and I have discussed it. We're going to be precision when we get on the line with him. And there's 
some key things that we're going to share, much like we would in an ambassador meeting. So, yeah. Just real quick on the Board of Supervisors scheduling. Um, I know it might be difficult to start it in August with them just because they try not to get a lot on the calendar for August um, as it's a kind of transition period between the more hectic times before and the more hectic times to come. Um, it might, it just depends um, on specific supervisors, but just FYI, uh, they try to keep it lighter in August. Okay. And with that, Elisa, I'm wondering if you have, of course, it depends on each supervisor, but I'm wondering if you have suggestions in terms of how far out um, just get. Um, you want to give them as much lead time as possible. Uh, if you want your choice of days and times, you'll want to do a, like a couple months out. Um, if you're more flexible, then, you know, a month could be doable. But specifically in our office, I know things get booked up pretty far in advance. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Welcome. So that timeline we kind of worked in, if we can discuss it in June and get our ambassadors assignments set, send out the invitations in um, July for September, October. That's that's a good uh, timeline. Um, okay. All right. So we're getting um close to our time here and we have any other thing else on um that um particular task um and as we said earlier um we'll have the updated um work plan with the notes from the previous meeting um at the next meeting so we'll we'll be able to go um through those um particular pieces um anything else around the the work plan any of those Crawford you had suggested has yes you had um, things. let me throw out just the subject areas and then maybe uh your standing committee here could say what task this belongs under um I guess Patrice thought because I wanted to put these to the general cab board. And she thought that it'd probably be better to come from OCEC. The first one being the culture. Do we want to identify the culture of cab? And I know that's broad. Is that too broad for you? Too broad is, you know, what's our culture? And the second one would be how do we curtail the revolving door regarding cab membership? We've had several people, we get them for nine months or a year and then they're gone. So where do we put working on that revolving door? Just looking for some suggestions there. Um, I have a comment. So um, on the agenda, we talk about onboarding plan, which you all talked about briefly, and I put it on the agenda again, or it's on the agenda. So would, do you think that that would have, um, if we had an onboarding plan, for new members and even existing members, you know, they might want a refresher about what their responsibilities are um, as a member. Would that, do you think that that would align and in, in maybe somewhere on the work plan? Like have an onboarding checklist? Um, well, an onboarding process, I would say, um, similar to the cab talk that Crawford was doing with new members, but actually develop a process or a plan so that each member that comes on board, you know, you go through a process. It is a checklist also, but you're going through a process to, um, you know, let the members know what the responsibilities are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think there's some merit to that. 
um, cause remember I came on kind of out of the cycle. And so I missed a lot of things and, um, it's, it would be helpful that no matter when a person comes on, that there is a process to keep them well-informed um, so they can be effective in their job. Do we wanna add that to one of these tasks or is it a separate? It seems to me, maybe we could add it to one of the tasks, um, onboarding or something in there. And and I think it's, I my recollection is that that was what was in task six. So we have the annual orient orientation. Okay, can we put onboarding? And onboarding, I think that um, that was some of uh, what um, was discussed in that. Um, there we go, yes, house. okay. Um, and um, yeah, so the I think whatever those steps are um, to that, um, the other piece um, to me is a little bit different because we're talking about retention and retention is a little bit different from onboarding. We, mm -hmm. we want to have good onboarding so that hopefully you retain folks. Um, but I'm not sure um, where that goes in terms of the if it's in if it's in the membership cultivation or um, uh, um yeah could, could we possibly consider because my other point here was um mentoring you know are there mentoring techniques that we should be engaging in and maybe we put mentoring and retention together somewhere and, and again, just so it it it, it pops up, and we got to say, uh oh, we better make sure we're doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think here because this is a work plan and mentoring. All these are really good ideas. I'm not sure exactly how you turn it into a task. Yeah, you know, uh, for retention, though we want to retain people, and it's to our advantage to retain people. I'm not sure how that goes to a task. Yeah, yeah. Well, you see, I wanted my original intent was to have a discussion with board members at the open board meeting. Yeah. And that's where I was going to, you know, hope to develop these concepts. But it was suggested that it come to you first. <laughs> so, oh, really? yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Well, that's so, so maybe we need to go back and uh, cover some of these things. I can rephrase, and we'll, because if you don't think it, it really fits here, that's fine. Maybe it's just a discussion, and that that that's fair too. How's that? I mean, I think definitely in terms of the onboarding, it makes sense. In terms of the, the retention, okay, I, I think a, a broader conversation would be great because there might be various reasons why folks are leaving from the different committees, having those perspectives. Um, okay. You know, and, and if, if that's a task that maybe the broader committee says, OCEC, can you all you know, we see these issues, perhaps can you all help develop yeah. something? Well, then that would make sense. Thank you. I think that the way you stated that, now there was another one in here. Um, what should be our approach to positioning current members for future leadership? Do you think that belongs with OCEC or is that CAB as a whole? Um, say that one more time. Well, we've got to start thinking ahead. And thinking ahead means who's our future leadership? We've got pe pe individuals who will be terming out this year. Right, right. So are we now, what's, what are we doing now 
to identify and approach individuals, ask individuals, do you want to participate in future leadership? Again, this was an item I wanted to present to the CAB board, but they wanted it to come here first. Should we go back to the CAB board with that? Well, it should certainly be um, a kind of a routine um, function, right? Because we, you're exactly right. We can anticipate some of the exits, right? Because people are terming out. And, and so um, having some kind of a, a, a business continuity check. Um, Any business does it, you're dead on. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, that could be a task. I mean, the problem with it being with OCEC is it's much greater than OCEC. It's the whole board, right? Okay. So there's only a few of us sitting on this committee. That to me, um, kind of having a business continuity check, um, whether it's every, you know, at every meeting, do we, do we assess that or do we do it quarterly? But we should be assessing our vacancy factor, right? Um, so, and then collaborate with, of course, county staff, meaning Monique and Patrice. I just don't know if, where it would fit in OCEC. Okay. I think that hey, you've done a nice job. You've given me two major headings that, in fact, we're going to have an agenda meeting later on today. I'll propose those to put those back on the agenda. How's that? That sounds good. I'll, I'll work with, and thank you. And I didn't mean to take up all of your time. I'm following orders. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, perhaps we can um, bring the uh, the conversation around culture to to the next to the next meeting because that that's an interesting um, concept and um, the way Scott asked some of the the questions around the skills and abilities and um, some of the things that came up in the interview. I think there's a nice opportunity to align around some some values for the for the group. That being said. Um, I want to be respectful of time. I also have a, a 1230 uh, meeting myself. Um, so um, I can tell um, in future meetings will have to be a little uh, more uh, stringent perhaps on, on conversations or our, um, our items to make sure that we can get through most of them. Um, but I think uh, we can, um, Monique gave us a, a bit of an update on the, the contact list. So I think we're kind of good with where we are there. Um, uh, the onboarding plan, um, Scott and I are going to uh, meet uh, before the next meeting to kind of discuss that. And we can um, have that as an agenda item at our next meeting. Um, were there any other um, next steps, um, Monique? Um, that were captured? Um, well, I know definitely the work plan. So mm -hmm. hopefully by next the next meeting, the work plan will be completed to vote on. Um, and I'm not really sure if anyone else can help me out if there are any next plans other than the work plan. I think that was, it was the work plan and the um, uh, uh, phone call support for the contact. Oh, right, right, okay. Um, to um, let us know about that. Um, so I think what I can do is I can um, send out, well, we could talk about it more, the logistics of how we can do it at the agenda planning, but maybe when we come back for the next meeting, it'll be a report out on what was done as far as that's concerned. Okay, great. Okay. okay. Great. Um, I hate to be so abrupt, um, but appreciate uh, everyone's time and the meeting. And we don't motion to adjourn, right? We can just be no, we just uh, yeah, no, we don't motion to adjourn. Um, but yeah, so we you can adjourn it at this time. Okay, great. Thanks, everybody. So good to see you all. And, you. Uh, and the the culinary kitchen is open, so I'm going to be sending out some invites for folks to come <laughs> come meet over here at CCC. <laughs> Brenda, Brenda and Brenda. I will be there. Yes, yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, Brenda. <laughs> okay. Take care, everybody.
Bye-bye. Bye. Good Bye. meeting. Thank you.